Hello dear subscribers and watchers. What's up? This is Viv from SlideNerd here. In this video, we are going to talk about implicit and explicit parameters in Java. Now this is very important if you guys want to understand how the this keyword works in Java, which we will be talking about very shortly in the upcoming videos. So first, let's take a look at two types of parameters that you have as a method. One is implicit parameters and two is explicit parameters. So far, we guys have been working with the second one and you guys have seen the first one but you just don't realize it that this is an implicit parameter so let's talk about explicit parameters first here is a class my data it has a single method inside called get area it takes an argument site and tries to return site square which is the area of a square right and since site into site is an integer the return type of the method is int over here now if you go to main method you create an object of my data by saying my data mine equals to new my data here in other words mine is a reference to an object of type my data now when you say mine dot get area 20 you know very well this 20 is going to go here into this int side variable then you will calculate side into side which is 400 and that's exactly what will be returned over here so what is great about this well nothing great this is an explicit parameter in other words when a method specifies parameters inside the parentheses they are explicit parameters so then what is an implicit parameter in that case that is the question which you have right now let's take a look at implicit parameter I say string s1 equals to hello again s1 is a reference that points to an object of type string right now if I say s1 dot length you get the value 5 if I say string s2 is by over here and then if I say s2 dot length in this case the length is going to be 3 right because 1 2 3 that's as simple as that so there is a nice difference if you guys notice the length method does not take any argument in the parentheses but on the other hand it seems to work or you can say relate itself with this object and work with its data to get the value 5 here when you said s1 dot length it was 5 written there is no explicit parameter over here the length method acts on a different object each time so in this case the object is the implicit parameter to the length method so implicit parameters are the ones or you can see the objects on which the methods are being called so now let's take a look at implicit parameters in a little more detail when I say string my name inside class my data there is a method display that is simply going to print that variable my name out over here now if you go to our main method I'll say my data b1 is new my data in other words take the class my data create a reference d1 that will point to an object of type my data then I say d1 dot my name equals to xyz have I done anything great nothing at all there is our reference d1 I've made its my name as xyz then if you say d1.display let's take a look at what happens here you have d1 on the left side and you have display method now remember the display method simply says display the variable my name but the variable my name of which object is it d1 is it d2 is it d3 this is what the implicit parameter is all about so now when you say d1.display it is concerned with displaying my name that belongs to the object d1 over here now when you say my data d2 is new my data now let's take a look at the same thing I say d2 dot my name is ABC and now when I say d2 dot display it is concerned with displaying my name that belongs to d2 in other words at runtime Java is gonna look at this variable my name and then it's gonna see okay which method or which object was the guy who called me if it's d1 then I will work with the data that belongs to d1 here if it's d2 then I will work with the data that belongs to d2 over here and that is what implicit parameters are all about now this is very very closely related to something called this keyword which we will be talking about in the upcoming videos so here are a few things that you guys need to remember one the object on which the method is called is the implicit parameter in other words the object is the implicit parameter when you say s1.length 
So the data type of the implicit parameter is the class in which the method is defined. It is called implicit because we don't declare it when we declare the method. Now again if you take a look here at our public void display and if you know very well we say d1.display right. So d1 is the implicit parameter therefore the data type of d1 is nothing but the class to which it has been created as an object right. For example in our case the data type of d1 was my data if you guys go to the previous slides and that is exactly the data type of our implicit parameter. Now again when you declare the method over here public void display you don't have to mention this d1 anywhere over here and that is why it is called implicit in our case. So hopefully you guys have understood something about implicit parameters and what kind of stuff happens with them. Now this is very closely linked to the this keyword which we'll be talking about in the upcoming videos. If you guys like what you saw please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.